Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're exploring a fascinating new way to pinpoint inflammation in the body. If you've been following discussions on heart disease, autoimmune conditions, and even cancer, you know that chronic inflammation often plays a central role. Our goal today is to share a method that could potentially identify the exact tissues where inflammation is taking place. Along the way, we'll highlight emerging insights on how chronic inflammation works and what might be done to bring the body back into balance. I'm Alara Skye, and I'm glad to be here. Inflammation is often discussed in broad terms, especially since many of the standard blood tests, like C-reactive protein or CRP, only tell us that there's inflammation somewhere in the body. They don't reveal exactly where. But recent research from Case Western Reserve University could change that. Researchers there have developed a method to detect specific inflammatory markers that point to the precise organ or tissue under stress, instead of providing a general inflammation score. That's a key breakthrough. As you mentioned, traditional tests give a big picture reading, but leave a lot of questions unanswered. Let's talk about how this method works. According to the study, when reactive oxygen species, or ROS, come into contact with certain molecules, they leave behind unique markers that scientists can now detect using specially designed antibodies. This means that doctors could someday run a blood test, not just to see if you have inflammation, but also to see exactly where it's happening. Right. Let's put that into context. Reactive oxygen species, or ROS, serve an important role during acute inflammation such as when your immune system fights off an infection or repairs an injury. However, when these molecules are produced in excessive amounts, they can damage DNA, proteins, and lipids. The new research shows that ROS can react with linoleic acid in cell membranes, creating specific compounds called epoxy keto octadecanoic acids, or ECODs. These ECODs then bind to genetic material and proteins in affected tissues, creating a molecular footprint that can be followed. That's an impressive level of detail. If researchers can trace inflammation to specific tissues, there's an opportunity for earlier detection of diseases like age-related macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, and potentially even heart or liver conditions. The senior author of the study mentioned that this discovery could pave the way for new tests and future drug developments. Because once we know where the problem is, interventions can become more targeted. This method does more than just show us where inflammation is active. It also points to broader questions about how chronic inflammation arises. For a long time, many believed that chronic inflammation was simply acute inflammation that never fully resolved, as if the body got stuck in a loop. But newer research, including a paper in Frontiers in Immunology, suggests there's more going on. It proposes that chronic inflammation may stem from a lack of anti-inflammatory mediators, rather than an overproduction of pro-inflammatory signals alone. That's a really interesting concept. To break it down, our bodies typically rely on a balance between inflammatory processes, what we need to protect ourselves, and anti-inflammatory processes that help us recover. Acute inflammation flares up when there's a threat, and then resolution mechanisms step in once that threat has passed. In chronic cases, researchers now think we might be losing the signals that tell the inflammation to quiet down. This has led to the term unalimation, which essentially describes the functional balance between these opposing forces. Exactly. The practical implication is that simply blocking inflammation might not be enough. For conditions like arthritis or heart disease, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, can reduce symptoms by blocking inflammatory signals. However, they don't restore the missing anti-inflammatory factors that help the immune system stand down. That's why so many chronic diseases persist or worsen despite drug therapies. This emerging viewpoint suggests that therapies of the future might need to replenish anti-inflammatory mediators to truly restore balance. This shift in thinking also affects how we look at complex diseases like cancer. Tumors appear to feature a mix of inflammatory and anti-inflammatory signals, which implies the environment supporting them isn't simply chronically inflamed in a traditional sense. Instead, there may be a more complicated imbalance. Hence, researchers are now exploring 
whether we should focus on re-establishing the normal checks and balances in the body instead of just dampening inflammation. While this new research opens a path toward more precise tests and treatments, it's also important to look at what drives chronic inflammation in our everyday lives. Dr. Mercola refers to what he calls the four E's as major contributors, excess linoleic acid, electromagnetic fields, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, and endotoxins. These factors can overload the body's natural balance and lead to persistent inflammatory stress. Let's go through each of those. First, we have excess linoleic acid, or LA. This is an omega-6 polyunsaturated fat found in large amounts in vegetable oils and many processed foods. While a small amount of omega-6 is necessary, too much of it can disturb mitochondrial function and the gut microbiome. Both of those systems are crucial for keeping inflammation in check. This is why many health discussions emphasize limiting processed foods high in vegetable oils. Next are electromagnetic fields, or EMFS. These are generated by electronic devices such as cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, and microwaves. When EMFs interact with our cells, they can activate voltage-gated calcium channels. This leads to excess calcium inside the cells, triggering the creation of peroxynitrite, a strong oxidant that fuels inflammation. While it's not easy to avoid all modern technology, being aware of how EMFs might affect the body encourages us to find small ways to reduce our exposure, such as turning off devices when not in use. The third category is endocrine-disrupting chemicals, or EDCs. These substances interfere with our hormonal systems, often by mimicking or blocking the action of natural hormones like estrogen. Plastics, for example, contain compounds such as phthalates and BPA. When these chemicals bind to estrogen receptors, they can alter cellular processes, again leading to increased calcium influx and further contributing to the formation of peroxynitrite. This cascade adds yet another source of chronic inflammatory stress. Finally, we have endotoxins. These substances are released by certain bacteria, particularly those that thrive when our gut environment is compromised. When the gut barrier is weakened due to poor diet or other factors, these endotoxins can seep into the bloodstream and trigger strong inflammatory responses. A diet high in processed foods and refined sugars can disrupt gut health, allowing these bacteria and their toxins to create ongoing inflammation. That makes sense. If the body is continuously dealing with these challenges, it can't easily swing back into an anti-inflammatory state. In other words, when the four E's dominate our daily environment and lifestyle, the body is locked in a constant alert mode. Eliminating or minimizing these stressors can lighten the load on our immune system, allowing it to maintain a better balance between pro and anti-inflammatory signals. Exactly. And once that burden is lifted, the body has a much easier time restoring the balance known as unalimation. Let's also highlight some of the questions people often have about inflammation and chronic disease. One that comes up is why it's been so hard to detect the exact location of inflammation. The answer is that traditional markers, like CRP, don't specify which tissues are involved. That's why the new antibody-based approach could be a game changer. Another common question is, what is unalimation and why is it so important? As we've discussed, unalimation represents the functional balance between inflammatory and anti-inflammatory signals. If that balance slips, you can have lingering inflammation, even when no infection or injury remains. People also wonder why NSAIDs don't do more to stop chronic inflammation. These drugs block certain inflammatory pathways, but don't replenish the missing anti-inflammatory signals, which leaves the deeper imbalance in place. There's also interest in whether chronic inflammation causes cancer. Researchers have found that cancer cells appear to exist in an environment where both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory elements are abundant. This state, often called heightened unalimation, might promote tumor growth in ways we're just beginning to understand. Blocking inflammation alone hasn't proven sufficient to halt cancer progression, so there's a growing focus on restoring the body's normal regulatory networks. Finally, many people want to know the best ways to restore balance and combat chronic disease. Based on this emerging research, the approach involves more than suppressing inflammation. Effective strategies may include supporting the body's innate repair functions, reducing oxidative stress, and enhancing mitochondrial health. 
Addressing the four E's in our environment and diet is a strong place to start. That's an excellent summary. The key takeaway is that the field of inflammation research is quickly evolving. We're moving from broad tests and general approaches to a future in which doctors could identify the precise tissues affected. We're also learning that restoring healthy inflammation levels means more than just shutting down pro-inflammatory signals. It involves reinstating the body's own anti-inflammatory mediators. By reducing chronic stressors like excess linoleic acid, EMFs, endocrine disruptors, and endotoxins, we can help the body maintain a balanced immune response. Absolutely. It's an exciting time for anyone looking into the root causes of chronic diseases. The hope is that within the next few years, we'll see more precise diagnostic methods and new therapies that focus on rebalancing the immune system rather than simply blunting its responses. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for joining us here on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We appreciate our listeners and hope this discussion helps you better understand chronic inflammation and the latest research around it. Stay tuned for more insights on how to keep your body in balance. Until next time, take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.